Hi guys, uh, welcome to another uh, Hacker Earth webinar. And uh, today we have with us uh, Mohit Sharma, who is the VP Head Talent Acquisition IT at Social General um, Global Solution Centers. So first of all, uh, a big welcome to Mohit for joining us today for this webinar and uh, to all the attendees who've taken time out of their busy schedules and being a part of this session. Uh, first of all, I'd like to introduce you to the platform as well so that you can keep your questions coming in. So in the platform, uh, there's a questions tab in which uh, you can ask your questions anytime you feel like. We have around uh, 40 minutes of uh, presentation today. So we'll be taking questions during this slides as well, as well as at the end, we have a dedicated Q&A session. So if you guys uh, are able to see the questions panel, then maybe you can write yes or no so that we get to know that uh, it's working fine for you guys as well. Okay, so I have a lot of yeses coming in. So thank you so much, guys, for this. Uh, so moving on, uh, I'll start off with uh, telling you guys a little bit about Hacker Earth, and then we'll move on to Mohit with his presentation. So uh, tech skills is one of the most valued global currency these days. I mean, uh, everyone is looking for developers, be it any kind of industry and organizations that are actually betting big on this currency to drive growth as well as innovation in their uh, companies. So be it any size, be it a big company like Netflix, Google, Facebook, Amazon, to a small startup uh, like Oculus or Airbnb, they all require people with tech skills, developers who can build up their websites or maybe um, help them in uh, maintaining their websites as well as helping from it from falling apart. So. It, the major concern these days is about identifying as well as hiring talented developers. It's not that developers are not out there. It's more about getting the best for your particular organization. Because, uh, you know, um, everyone wants the best. You want your company to excel, to be the best company, to be among the top Fortune 100 companies in maybe in the next five years. And for that, uh, I'll be very honest with you, you require developers. So technical recruiting is a little hard. It takes around 50 to 60 days uh, for closing a particular position, 10,000 plus hours of uh, screening, six rounds of assessments, including interviews, and the most shocking fact, the average cost to hire is around $30,000. Um, so our platform is an AI-powered platform, which uh, lets you screen 500 plus skills in 35 plus programming languages. Apart from this, we uh, offer four languages spoken languages that is english french portuguese spanish and we're adding a couple more as well the proctoring settings are very robust i mean the uh, developers cannot use any unfair means be it copy pasting the code from online and um, asking a friend to sit by near you and near them and actually helping them in the test we take care of everything the proctoring measures that we have are really robust and you'll surely like them and you get the best talent Remote video interviews, again, one of the major features that we have, you can uh, ask your candidate to take an interview uh, from a remote location and you can see them skill, uh, see them uh, write a code live. So that's another big thing that we have. And an in-depth uh, analytics. So analytics is one more thing that um, hiring managers are very particular about. And we provide in-depth analytics of everything, of each and every stroke of the candidate as to how he went about with the algorithm and how he approaches a particular problem statement. So you can see it live as well as we provide you with a recording as well. The hacker difference. So there are a few uh, testimonials from our customers, Danhambi, Zalora, Itron. So as you see, these are from different industries. It's not that just the IT industry or the com computer software industry is requiring developers. It's all industries be it manufacturing, be it um, automation, be it uh, banking. So our customers have seen a significant reduction in time to hire by 50% and an improvement in the quality of hire by 60%. So moving on, uh, these are a few customers that we have. We are globally serving around a thousand plus customers, big names there. And we would love to see your company logo here as well. So that's my end. And uh, now we have uh, Mohit. And uh, over to you, Mohit, now. Thank you, Arbas. Let me know when you can see my screen. Yes, so we can see your screen now. Perfect. Just one second. So guys, just uh, another check. You can ask our questions anytime you want. 
and we'll try to address all of them maybe through the session or at the end of the session so keep the questions coming in excellent thanks arbaz uh, hi everyone um, thanks for joining the webinar this is mohit um, a bit about myself uh, i've spent uh, 16 years in the industry i've been very fortunate to work with different organizations different setups um, it's been throughout in talent acquisition space i never decided to move out of ta and i don't think that's something which is in plan so i continue to uh, be a ta professional um, i have been also fortunate to work in different cities in india and overseas so got an experience on the domestic as well as international hiring uh, my personal interest is, is in the areas of talent attraction um, employer branding um, engagement and uh, i also have a deep interest towards technology interventions and talent acquisition um currently i work with uh, a company called society general uh, we are one of the largest uh, banks in the europe uh, we spread globally and uh, we have a global uh, in-house center in bangalore and chennai in india close to around 8000 people so in my role i currently uh, head the it talent acquisition uh, for our setup in india so that's about me on a personal side uh, besides uh, being a recruiter by heart i also love uh, music and uh, do a bit of concert photography uh, before we get into the, the presentation, um, just to give you an, an outline of what this is going to be. So I'll be uh, basis my experience in the industry. I'll be sharing my views about what are some of the core ingredients, what are some of the core attributes today is required for a recruiter to possess from a current context as well as from a future perspective, right? So how do you really stay relevant and ahead of the game in the current uh, context, right? That's all about from the from the webinar. Uh, so we'll start with the basics, and that's I think it's the most important. So to my mind, uh, the the five core uh, attributes which are required, and and that's not only for the recruiter. It's I think it's important for everybody uh, across professions. And these five are being approachable, being accessible, proactive, diligent, and innovative. Okay, uh, just spend a little time on each one of them. When I say approachable. I think uh, there is a slight difference between being accessible and approachable. The, the core difference is when I say approachable, somebody who is very open to uh, hear ideas, who's open to collaborate. Uh, so as a recruiter, it's very important when you work in the corporate or when you work in an environment, it's, it's you to be very approachable. Uh, being accessible, and I think that's what we keep hearing in the industry today, you know, uh, the recruiters don't respond to phone calls, they don't respond to emails. Uh, you know, we, we tried reaching uh, the recruiter, there has been a missed calls, but nobody responded. So I think being accessible is more in terms of, you know, how do you manage your emails? How do you manage your calls? Uh, you know, you being, you should be, you should revert on the calls, you should revert on the emails. And I know it's a bit of task because you, you're gonna get plenty of emails every day, you know, you cannot necessarily respond to every email. Maybe, you know, use draft, uh, which could help you to, smartly uh, respond to people but make sure that you at least try to respond as much as possible right being proactive in the recruiting industry is extremely important uh, uh, and when i say being proactive it is multifold uh, um, activities it could be as simple as creating backups for the critical offers it could be proactively informing the candidates about the documents which he or she has to produce uh, post selection um, you know, more to reduce the cycle time to hire. Um, so, you know, being proactive in everything you do and then comes to the diligent, you know, it's just, which is extremely important for being very thorough about what you're doing, you know, do it very passionately, do it very thoroughly. Innovative, uh, we can't live without, I think I remember in, uh, when I started my career uh, 16 years back, uh, it was more about the recruiting. It's more about carrying out the activities, right? We never used to really have to look at things in a different way but now is the time when uh, it's important for you to have the solution mindset being more innovative think out of the box and it not necessarily has to be something which has to be driven by your managers or your head of the tas or the leaders it's actually comes from the recruiter itself right so being innovative is uh, to my mind is very very important so being approachable accessible being proactive, diligent, and innovative. And I say this again, it's not only for being a recruiter, be it any profession you go, always keep these five things back of your mind. So moving on to the, the next one. Now this is something which is, you probably would not have heard it in, in many conferences or the webinars. It's about know your business. Now, 
I recollect uh, meeting an industry colleague uh, a month back, um, somebody who has been in the industry for the last six, seven years, extremely sharp recruiter. And uh, during the conversation, I was just only asking about, you know, you have been recruiting uh, Java full stack engineers, what these people do in the in, in, in the business, right? I mean, what are their roles in the in the organization? How does it impact your business growth? And she couldn't answer that. And that's where I realized, I think it's in today's time, it's very important for each one of us uh, to be very thorough about your business. When I say business, you should know what the business objectives, um, you know, how does your business actually generate revenues? What is your roadmap, especially for the tech organizations, you should be very thorough about what is your tech uh, roadmap, right? For your, uh, what's the vision of the organizations, et cetera. Now, why this is also important is let's say your organizations do not really focus on machine learning and AI projects, right? I mean, that's probably something which they don't want to focus on. This essentially means as a recruiter, you are, your pitch should be not onto the machine learning AI space, but more into the full stack, more into the areas which are relevant to the business, right? So at least from a recruiter standpoint, you may not really be thorough about the revenue numbers, the targets, et cetera, which is absolutely fine. But at a very broad level, what is the business of my organization, right? How do we generate revenues? What people do in the organization? And then develop an ability to connect the mandates on which you work or the technology areas to the business, right? So instead of uh, at a at the start of the cycle, instead of um, instead of asking the hiring manager what you need, right? Tell me what are the skill sets you require. Ask why you need. I think that's very important. Uh, is to understand if you're recruiting, let's say, a Pega architect, right? Ask the hiring manager how this Pega architect is going to help in our organization. What the role is this person is going to play? Get into the very in depth about the application because more you understand the business, your ability to uh, find the right talent would grow up, right? So that's uh, to my mind is um, a very very essential. Uh, it also helps you to create the right pitch, sell uh, effectively in the market. And uh, you know, have a very meaningful conversations with the potential uh, uh, the applicants. Um, moving on to the next one. Now, since we spoke about the business, I think next comes the know your customers. And I picked up this word since I've, I've spent a, quite a good time in the banking industry. Uh, know your customers is a very common term out here, uh, which is all about um, and who. And here I'm referring to customer as could be the hiring managers. Or it could be, um, it could be the candidates, right? Um, when it comes to uh, be the hiring managers or the candidates, it's very important for you to have a thorough research about the individual. I think that's where, which is which is a missing element in the current context. Um, many times I hear even from my team members that you know we made an offer, somebody has not joined, and then we realize the person actually was looking for something else. And we made an offer of something else, right? It's a pretty disappointing situation. But I think very important for us to at least spend some time doing a bit of more research about the individual. And it could be candidate more to understand why you're looking out for a change, what motivates you, a bit of the personal side. You know, understand what motivates the person, right? And accordingly, you pitch, accordingly, you make an offer, and so on and so forth. From a hiring manager standpoint as well, right? I mean, when you often deal with 10, 15 people, it becomes very important for you to understand how each one of them operate. What are the likings? Uh, who are the core influencers? Now, it's very, very important when you join a new setup in an organization and when you have to deal with multiple people, identify one or two of those influencers who could really help you to establish yourself in that setup, right? And that's that's extremely, extremely important for you. So you probably spend 10 hours. You don't necessarily have to spend 10 hours on one or two but you allocate your time and efforts and focus basis, you know, the, the individual. I think I think that's that comes with over with, with an experience, but try to find out those uh, some of those influencers. So just to summarize on this slide, I think important is to do a bit of research, which which we kind of miss out today on the candidates and the hiring managers, right? Who they are, what they like, uh, you know, what kind of interactions they prefer and so on and so forth. Uh, Arbaz, do you have any questions uh, so far or should we continue? 
Yeah, we can continue right now. Maybe yes. I'll ask the questions. Okay. Now, since we're speaking about the customer, okay, and that's what I've learned in the last many years now, I think whatever we do, it's the most important is to have the customer at the center. And that also aligned to the design principle today. You really keep your customer at the center and build your solution around it, right? What essentially is mean? This means that even if a candidate is, is writing to you, you know, your response to the person, how do you write? What content of the email? What is the pitch? What do you speak? Everything becomes important at some point of time. I, at least from my side, ensure that I respond to most of the emails which I receive, most of the notes which I received on LinkedIn and so on. So forth. And it, eventually it helps, right, at some point of time. So here is a suggestion for you. From today onwards, whenever you finish a hiring process and you, you bring someone on board, ask this question to yourself. Have you done anything differently for this person? Have you done anything exceptionally different to create a wow experience to the customer? And it could be the candidate and it could be the hiring manager. And it could be as small as, you know, and I, and I remember one of my team members uh, a few months back uh, started something new, you know, as simple as uh, when she rolled out an offer letter to the candidate, right? She immediately uh, mailed it to the hiring manager as well, just to let you know, you know, this offer has been rolled out. It's such a nice move, right? I mean, instead of the hiring manager following up with the recruiter on, you know, where we are on the candidate, etc., it's it's the it's a recruiter who's actually reaching out to the hiring man saying, hey, just to let you know, it could be as simple as one line, but it made an impact. It certainly made an impact. So, uh, yeah, I mean, keep uh, whatever you do. At the end of the day, uh, in in our profession, most important is the customer, and that's the hiring manager or the candidate experience. We have to we have to go an extra mile if required to provide a good experience. Uh, moving on to the next one. Uh, which is a data-driven approach. Now, I remember when I started my career as a recruiter, I used to maintain a tracker, right? I used to maintain multiple trackers rather for every scale, every account. We used to fill in some details on the on an Excel, right? With the technology coming in picture, you know, you have ATS, you have different other technology solutions where, and we've been, we've been pushed to, of course, continue to uh, look at uh, leveraging those technology solutions and not maintain a manual tracker but i still feel i still believe that you should to a certain point of time you should maintain your own data repository uh, organize it well now it is not only about how do you track or how effectively you track now in the current context and in the future what would be more relevant would be how do you really leverage the data to influence or take decisions right um, coming to that very ground level, right? The conversations which each one of us have on a daily basis with the comp and bend team, right? We decide to make an offer to somebody and then we have this back and forth with the comp and bend on, you know, this, the skill comes with a higher cost. You know, I don't think this candidate is gonna come at this, this, this compensation and so on and so forth, right? If we effectively have, and we actually have tracked the data somewhere, but we have not used the data to influence comp and bend saying that, hey, you know what? I so far have processed 30 candidates. Here is an average salary, which clearly says that the compensation for any candidate coming at the skill would be at a would be a greater than you know the 50 percentile or whatever, right? So please uh, leverage your data effectively, and then I also recommend you uh, to, if possible, right? Um, there are there are some of the universities and some of the institutes have started offering course on talent analytics, right? The talent analytics is a very broad term. It's not only restricted to recruiting, but uh, if you get an opportunity and if you have a time and a passion towards what you do, I strongly recommend you to go for it. it, it it's going to help you in the near future for sure, right? So, and when I say talent analytics, it is as simple as in layman terms. You, you build models um, using uh, some programming languages. Uh, to draw some insights out of it. Um, and I remember we, we we collaborated with one of the startups uh, recently and, and we said, you know what, we want to develop a model to understand if there's a correlation between the education background or the specialization and how the individual would perform on the programming as a language, uh, on the programming language, right? Or it could be correlation between 
the years of experience in the industry and the performance is there a correlation between uh, the tenority of the of the candidate in a particular organization and the performance is there a correlation between the industry and the selection so there's a lot of actually uh, uh, you know correlations and the models which you could build right we probably do not have the uh, get into the data science ai space but you could always collaborate with somebody to build models on this so start from the beginning i mean when you're starting your recurring uh, journey you know at least start tracking the data and leverage it effectively to influence and make the right decisions data driven continues to be one area where there's going to be a lot of technology intervention coming in i mean you must be knowing about short of words but your matchmaking software which means you, you put a job description you put a bunch of resumes it would match and tell you okay these are the top 10 out of the 500 right that essentially is going to be it's also the data driven right so uh, data continues to be a big big thing please focus on that in my view um and as I said, if you get an opportunity, go and learn talent analytics. Digital presence. Now, um, I think again, uh, uh, 12 years back, uh, on 12, 13 years back, uh, this whole role uh, evolved in the industry called social media recruiter, right? But the role was more about how do you leverage some of the social media platforms? It, and essentially it used to be Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. How do you leverage those platforms to source, uh, attract, and hire, right? Uh, and now the situation is, I think everything, it becomes essential for us to leverage the platforms, but not only limited to the social, it could be any digital platforms. And it is, and while I've not put the, the logo off here, out here, uh, one of the ways, one of the organizations in India smartly recruit talent using Quora. I'm not sure if you know about it. Quora is a platform to 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 gather um, answers to your queries, etc. Right. So if you're recruiting, let's say, um, uh, as a data scientist, right, uh, for a farmer as a as an industry, uh, you could put a simple question saying, saying, you know, what do you think how a data science could impact pharma industry? Basis the response, the quality of the response. You can reach out to the to, to some of the quality guys and you know start the interactions. So I know organizations who actually have done a heavy hiring only using Quora, right? So please, uh, as a recruiter, it's very important for you to understand what are the digital platforms available. Uh, again, go back to your business context. If you understand the business content, what platform you should leverage. And how you should leverage and again this is when i said digital presence it's not only restricted to how you would help your organization to position better in the talent market it's also about the personal branding right now this notion in the recruiters today that you know i have just spent three years five years in the industry i don't think i can do much about it but let me tell you if you start today if you start today it's it's become very important for you to start contributing to the community now itself don't wait for you know somebody to tell you okay now you have become a leader you are now supposed to do this start in an early age i think that's very very important and it could be as simple as follow the right people uh, follow the right topics contribute on those topics it could be as simple as and then I think linkedin for example is a very uh, very nice feature called articles right and if you have a good command on language and you understand the subject well it could be as simple as put a one paragraph right but do that don't wait for somebody to tell you okay once you grow in the industry 18 years 20 years then you should start doing start now okay so please focus on the personal branding on the digital side as well as uh, uh, you know uh, contribute towards positioning your company into the talent market that's a very interesting uh, question i often ask uh, during uh, the interview process uh recruiting the recruiters right so i asked this question about let's say there's a company which is uh, into let's say automobile and they decided to set up an, an it shop um and you've been appointed as the recruiter of, uh, you know in charge to attract and hire and the ceo said you know we don't care about the money i mean we will throw money whatever is needed but we need people coming from some top product some top tech uh firms top-notch firms what would be your what would be your strategy right and i think the clear answer to that is 
it's very important again to understand the business context and why an automobile organization a company is setting up an IT what kind of talent would they need what kind of talent would be suitable for them find out where the talent is what are some of the digital platform where they would be available and then you know tap it right going further and we will speak more about it in the in the, in the subsequent slide but just to uh, close on this slide personal branding don't wait start now uh, help your organization to position better in the right talent community and again going back to the business context if you know the business context and let's say you don't have a project on the machine learning you don't need to get into kaggle you don't need to get into kaggle and and, and broadcast very important to find out where your talent is sitting and then position accordingly. So, moving on. Uh, so we, uh, Mohit, yes, really sorry. Sorry. we have uh, a couple of questions that are coming. So sure. uh, the first question is, uh, you mentioned that Quora as a platform can be used for uh, hiring by recruiters. So how do you say that uh, as a recruiter, one can use Quora? for uh, finding the candidates yes i give an example but i can i can give a couple of more examples let's say um let's say you have to hire a blockchain expert okay you can start a thread on quora uh stating uh what do you think how a blockchain is going to impact the banking industry it's, it's an interrogative right you're putting a question mark and saying hey what do you think guys and people actually respond right? people actually will come with their views etc based on the quality of the response you particularly find out who the gentleman is or who the person is who has actually responded find the person on linkedin or wherever reach out to that person pitch about what are your plans about on blockchain and then attract and hire right i know it's a long long thing but you a there are two advantages one is you actually able to create an impact on the Quora saying that your organization is actually intent to get into the blockchain space uh, as an example. At the same time, you able to at least identify some of the people who have the right expertise and then you bring them over for an assessment. Huh. Right. Uh, to let you know this uh, company which I was referring to is called nearby.com. A uh, gentleman named Ankur Variku, who is the CEO for the organization, he actually is very popular on Quora, and he 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 identify he identifies talent on Quora, bring them to their premise for discussions, right? Uh, maybe you follow and uh, know more about it. Okay. Uh, so one more question before we move on. This question is from Lee. Uh, he's asking uh, how do you pan on retaining candidates who have multiple offers from different companies i think it's a it requires one hour of conversation uh, if you have to get into this but very broadly i think it should start again with the first uh, start point which is what is the candidate looking for right you should be very thorough about the candidate motivation is a b c right what do you have to offer if you have to offer def is not the right person so be very clear are you offering and when i say offer it's not necessarily the compensation i'm talking about the role the fitment the organization the kind of work everything put together so you should be very very clear about am i reaching out am i processing the right candidate and the offer which i'm going to make is it aligned to his or her expectations number one number two is during the process itself uh, provide the right experience to the candidate and give him or her a sense that we are slightly different from some of the organizations you have been talking to right there's a research being done on the subject and it says that 40 percent of the people uh today actually apply for organizations basis what they hear from somebody else right so word of mouth right so very important for for you to really provide the right experience during the cycle uh, and has to be different um, number three is post offer of course uh, you know your different level of engagements and it could be as simple as bring the person to your premise for a meeting with and there are, there, are, there are multiple practices currently happening in the industry right I mean as simple as you bring the critical offers to the office for a coffee meetings with the hiring managers 
to, or or you know you're doing a meetup you bring the person to the meetup and so on and so forth right uh, very interestingly uh, one of the it services in organized in india they did away something very different uh, they send out a letter right not only to the candidate not only the employment letter to the candidate but also send out a letter to his his parents stating that congratulations you are you know we, we are made an offer to your son a bit about our organizations feel comfortable he's going to the right place he, you know he's going to make the right career so it's a very different move right but i think it made a lot of impact especially from the india perspective uh, so try doing something different and especially when you know about the person is holding multiple offers uh, you know you need to understand what would still motivate the person to join you and then pitch accordingly but be realistic i mean be 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 very true to yourself mm -hmm. the person is expecting x y z and you don't have that to offer you know there's no point to then process it right okay yeah so i guess that answers the question uh, we have multiple uh, questions from shanji shubham gitesh we'll take them up uh, in a few minutes i guess yeah so Sounds moving good. on yeah okay so develop expertise now this is uh, something which is uh, very debatable and uh, and um, i often um, you know hear it and i often get into the conversation with my industry colleagues uh, about should we diversify or should we specialize right uh, again going back to when i started my career uh, the lot of people who started in, as a hr journalist because at that point of time it used to be a hr journalist used to do everything the recruiting lnt complement everything put together right uh, but especially in the last three to five years and the five years down the line, I, I think and I strongly believe that um, the value would be more on the expertise and not about, uh, not about diversifying, right? Now at an early age of being a recruiter, it's very, it may be slightly difficult for you to understand what your strengths are, right? but keep that back of your mind understand what your core strength is and build on it when i say that to give an example let's say you are you have spent four years recruiting in the product space in that case continue in the product build build the expertise on the product hiring same goes with engineering same goes with um, you know could be skill could be industry could be whatever right but i think very important is to build an expertise i remember i mean it was very difficult for us to recruit someone on hr tech transformation space because there are, there are very limited people who have really built their expertise on that so goes with the you know uh, one of the roles which is shaping up and is going to be very prominent in the next 18 months is going to be talent engagement talent community engagement managers right their job would be only to engage attract build pool for the talent acquisition team to you know process right you create pipeline of the talent i think so some of those roles will become very very prominent in the next um, next two to three years time uh, so the message to you is find your strengths uh, do some research as well in terms of if this is my strength this is the area which i have an interest in to do a bit of research about what are the possible streams I can get into and build expertise around it, right? More you diversify, the value would go down in my view, right? Uh, Arbal, before we get into the next, do you have any question you want to ask? Uh, okay, so we'll address one question and then we'll move on. Sure. Okay, so... Yes, so as a as a recruiter, and this question is coming from Hitesh, do you think that uh, you should offer CTC basis on the offer that they hold in hand, provided it's a trend nowadays and everyone gets multiple offers in hand when they are open in market? Okay, so Hitesh, I assume this is from a very India context standpoint. Um, there's no there's no right and the wrong answer to it it's it's pure situation based if you think this guy is actually critical for your business when i say critical uh, the person would not join you're going to have a hit on your business then in my view we should match to what the person is drawing or probably offer a counter 
right but i think but i think what again the missing element would be we have not done the due diligence to find out what is the person looking for what would motivate the person right and it could be as simple as uh, you know uh, somebody is actually looking for a job close to the house or you know somebody's uh, son has just got admission in a school and he prefers to stay closer to the school right whereas we are offering and we have put the person through a one month of process three rounds of interviews salary negotiation everything we have done right but we missed out the element that actually the person would prefer to stay closer to the home right and eventually the person gets another offer which could be lower than what we are offering but closer to the closer to the school and person decides to 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 pick it up right so back to the the fundamentals right uh, is uh, uh, is research about the candidate research about what the person is looking for what would motivate him or her and then process it accordingly and and, and certainly uh, a bit of customized approach when you process some critical uh, applicants uh, there has to be something different you should do right so back to your question it's very uh, subjective but in my view if the if you're if it's it's a business critical hire um, and in the current context uh, uh, especially i assume you're looking from you you're looking for an answer from an india standpoint yes it makes sense to to match the offer so long you you really want that guy i mean so so long you really want that guy yeah Okay, so I guess uh, Gopinath also had a very similar question. So I guess we have addressed that as well. So moving on now. Yeah. So just before we switch to the next, and uh, it's it's yeah. for for all the recruiters who have joined uh, the webinar from India. Um, and this is where where a problem is. You guys get into so much of transactions today, so much of focus on the delivery and filling up the requisitions. Take a pause. Think about it. Why you're yeah. doing it, right? And please have a different approach to the whole situation. Otherwise, the next five years, 10 years down the line, you will probably regret that you have not really done anything different, right? So take a pause. At least ask yourself for the next hire, have you done anything different, right? And if the answer is no, then please, uh, you know, you really need to you know, think about what, what different I could do uh, uh, to ensure the person get the right experience. I've even, I even heard and I have, I have witnessed um uh, candidates who have declined higher compensation just bases the experience he or she had during the recruiting process right since we're speaking about the experience and before we switch to the next slide there are there are also now uh quite a few technology solutions uh getting into the talent acquisition space which could help you to engage and enhance the experience of the candidate um Abbas, do you want to go on mute sorry oh sorry a bit of, okay so there is there are there are plenty of solutions coming in and um, we as an organization also has recently um, uh, worked with a startup to co-create a chatbot based solution uh, which uh, focus more on how do you engage and engage it helps you to improve the experience and then the efficiency right i think most of the technology solutions today come in the market uh, with a pitch about you know we could really bring efficiency right here's a chatbot who could do the screening for you instead of the recruiter doing the screening right we will bring efficiency for you no i think focus on the experience and the engagement first everything should be centered around the customer right so moving on um, and stay up to date and embrace the change this is my personal learning right honesty is my personal learning um, at least the last three years, right? Uh, the pace by which things have changed is considerably very high as compared to the pace of change um, between 2003, 2010 and between, right? Uh, what, what does it mean for each one of us? It means that we should be keep our eyes and ear open to understand what's happening in the industry, right? Um, I often get into conversation and I ask this question to the recruiters. Uh, tell me what is the new thing you've heard about in the recruiting space? The person says more or less often uh, that, you know, I don't get time to find out what's happening. B, my company is, uh, you know, small. I just continue working on filling up requisitions. Now, 
So you really need to keep your eyes and ear open, independent of where you work, what's your role is in the organization, understand what's happening in the industry. And when I say industry, it has uh, two facets to it. The first is the organization you work. So let's say you work for a farmer. You should be very, very thought about how, what are the some of the highlights of the farmer uh, uh, industry, right? I mean, and, and I'm sure you can pick up some of the newsletters, weekly newsletters where you get a feed, you know, 10 minutes, you read it, at least get updated about what's happening, right? Um, uh, I've worked, come from the, I of course work in the bank and previously also worked the bank. So for me, I follow a couple of newsletters. I've registered, I've subscribed to them and it just takes me 15 minutes to read, speak to a few people here and there in the industry to find out, you know, what's happening in the, some of our competitors, et cetera, right? How the, how the banking industry has been evolving, right? Uh, number one. Number two is the, the functional side of it, right? Uh, in the recruiting space, what's happening? So we often hear about chatbots, um, uh, you know, um, uh, machine learning products and so on and so forth, right? Go deeper, even if you, there is a no need for your organizations or in your role, go deeper to understand what it is, right? What essentially does it mean? You may not require to implement it or you may not really leverage it today, but you may leverage it in the future. So it's very important for you to keep yourself updated on some of these changes be the you know the environmental change the economical change the industry change and the technology interventions which is happening in the recruiting space right number one number two is uh, and and when you when you clear about what are these changes right what are the things happening what are the, what are the best practices happening adopt them you know build build bring it in your organizations right now most of the people in the industry right most of the people and i've learned this from one of the my mentors um believe in the benchmarking right so i work for the bank i go to find out employer referral as a process how is it done with the bank one bank two bank three bank four right okay i'll figure out okay this is the bank is doing the best i pick up that practice and adopt it to a certain extent it is fine but what i strongly recommend you to develop a forward thinking approach right and i have this i've learned at the uh, 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 from somebody I, I, I who mentored me uh, have that mindset about what is in it in the next three years what is in there for next five years how are we going to deal with the millennials right and and think about it instead of just benchmarking right come up with something new you know there's a phrase called um, don't change before the uh, don't change with the change but change before the change which essentially means that you should be you should be aware about what's happening what is ahead of you and then try to build solutions basis that right um so please i mean this is very very important uh, and i've seen in the industry people still continue to focus on recruiting um, filling up requisitions you know it's very important to adopt some of the new practices some of the new hiring approaches happening in the market and i can actually go you know keep talking about it because it's one of my uh, one of my favorite subjects on you know talent attraction and engagement but yes very important for you to find some of these practices adopt it look at what is in for your organization in the next three years and propose right um about should we go on or you have any questions yep so we have a lot of questions so what we'll do is we'll yeah, i'll club sure. total and i'll um, try to have a club up of multiple questions and then we can take them up later sounds good okay Business partnering. Uh, we as an organization uh, moved away from calling ourselves as recruitment to talent acquisition, right? And I'm sure most of you people must be aware of what's the difference between recruitment and talent acquisition. You, you can read about it as well. Uh, in a very layman term, recruiting is just the selection process, which is a subset of talent acquisition. Talent acquisition is a very wide term, right? Now, gone are those days when you as a recruiter could sit at a corner have a machine get into the job ports job portals uh, mine some resumes talk fill up the requisitions go back home right today the business expects us and if we continue to take pride in what we do uh, talent acquisition is certainly a very very strategic function right and we should firmly believe that because if you're not ready to believe it then you'll not be able to position it right now, when I say it's being a strategic function, the expectation for the businesses is the advisory, 
is the talent advisory, right? Is the business partnering. Um, and don't have wait for your manager or the head of TA or somebody senior to do that. It's it's everybody's job. Even somebody who just started the career um, in the recruiting space, develop this um, skill on business partnering. Now, to my mind, there are three core ingredients to become a strong business partner. Okay. The first is a business acumen and, and I'm sure you'll be able to now connect the dots and relate to the previous slides. When I say business acumen, you should be very thorough about what the business is. Let's say you work for an IT infrastructure account, or IT infrastructure business line, right? And you're the recruiter on that space, right? You should be very thorough about what is IT infrastructure means? What is the business objective? Um, where they intend to reach? What is the current headcount? Where they want to do? What are some of the transformation they want to drive? You should be very thorough about the business side. The second comes the behavioral, which means how do you position yourself? Um, again, back to the accessibility, approachability, and so on and so forth. Third is the function side. When you know business, you should know recruiting well, right? And then you, all these three put together will help you to become a strong business partner. But, and I, while I put this on the, the last uh, slide, to my mind, this is the most, most important um, topic or the skill, um, um, especially with the technology interventions coming in place, right? We often get into this con uh, with this dialogue about, you know, how technology is going to change the talent acquisition. What's, are we going to lose the job? The answer is no, because your business partnering, so long your business partnering is strong, you have a strong expertise on a subject. I think this role continues to play very significant in the next in the next uh, few years, right? So I urge you guys to understand the business partnering really well, uh, develop those skills, uh, and uh, uh, so just to just to summarize, and I'm and then I'll close and I'll pass it on to Arbas to to, to discuss on the, some of the questions you guys asked. So here's the here are the key takeaways for you. Stick to the basics. Keep telling yourself every year, you know, okay, you know, what are the basics? What are the fundamentals? Be approachable, accessible. Trust me, that's the most, most important. And do some very, very small, small things in your day-to-day -day activity, which makes you uh, the go-to recruiter for your business, right? Um, number two is be thorough about the business context, right? And I can, I can actually guarantee you this. The, most of the people today in the webinar may not be totally thorough about the business con they may be thought about the recruiting they may be thought about how to find talent but they do not know why they're hiring the, the skill for, for the business right so be very very thought about the business keep the big picture in mind you know in terms of um, you know let's say digital transformation for a long measure what does it mean what are some of the subsets of digital transformation what is the roadmap for the organization right know your customers well do a thorough research uh, be the hiring manager um, be the candidate. One of the, uh, I also would like to advise you whenever you get into a new setup, uh, speak to some of the people who have been in the system for long and understand who are the core influencers. It helps. If you're dealing with 10 hiring managers or 15 hiring managers, find out who are the one or two who can really vouch for you. Maybe spend more time. So do research about your customers really well. Customer centricity, back to it. Keep customer at the center on everything what you do. Leverage data effectively. We spoke a lot about it. Uh, you know, it's not about the tracking the data and how neatly you do that. It's about, all about how do you leverage it, right? Personal branding. Don't wait for um, somebody to tell you. Don't wait for you to become a manager or the head of TA. Start now. Okay. Uh, you will learn. I mean, you will learn. There will be a lot of learning. Uh, um, you know, as you go along. But very important for you to start now. Leverage digital platforms. Again, move away from just being social media to look at what are the other digital platforms available, right? Um, um, and, and again, thrive for specialization. So very, very important. That's my personal view, I think, and that's debatable, I know, uh, but I still believe figure out what you're good at, right? And build on it, right? As I started my conversation, I said, you know, my interest areas are, right, talent attraction and gate. That's the that subject which I'm thought about, right? Similarly, find what you're good at, what is something you want to pursue, uh, pursue further, right? Have forward thinking. Benchmarking is still okay, but 
start developing the forward thinking approach keep yourself updated very very important for you to understand what's happening what are the new practices what are the new technology solutions uh, you know there are plenty of uh, um, today uh, uh, online platforms available like hacker earth in which you could leverage to uh, to assist candidates and so on and so forth right so be aware of it of what's happening how you could leverage it does it make sense or not right um it's not necessary that you know if there are 10 technology solutions you have to bring all of them to your organization again understand the business context and then um take a call embrace change um and develop business partnering skills um the last but yes uh, switch from being a recruiter to a talent acquisition partner in my view with that, I'll uh, stop now and um, over to you, Airbus. All right, thank you, Mohit, uh, for such an informative session, I would say. And we have lots of lots of questions for you. Uh, but first, yeah. I'll start off by uh, maybe answering a few questions about uh, that might be more relevant to us at Hacker Earth rather than uh, forwarding it to you. So. Uh, one of the questions that came in was how to check if the candidate is technically strong in what their resume says. So the answer is very simple. You just need to test them on their coding skills and use a platform like Hacker Earth. Something that we provide uh, is in-depth analytics of the candidate reports in which you get to see how good a particular candidate is in one skill. So let's say if you want to hire a generic software developer and not a specialization, you can make up a test. The test can be made by you, your own questions, or we have an inbuilt question library of 12,000 plus questions. You can use them. You can build a test, send it to your candidate, make them have the test. Once the test is done, we provide you with an in-depth analytics of how the candidate performed, what are his uh, plus points, what language does he prefer to code, which, what are his strong points, what are his weaknesses. So one thing that I would suggest is using a platform like ours. Uh, okay, can I add so, to it? Uh, so Arbaz, yeah, can sure. I add to it quickly? Yeah, sure, why not? So I think uh, um, it's a very, very relevant question about, you know, how do you really assess the quality of the, the, the candidate, right? Based on the resume, especially the tech, tech uh, candidates, right? Uh, I think gone are those days when we used to just interview and assess, right? Yeah. I think that format continues to be there. But very important is to leverage online assessment platforms. Not necessarily has to be coding. It could be it could be as simple as multiple choice questions. But uh, today is the time when we we assess the candidate more on terms of the the real situations, right? Um, basis uh, put the right environment, technical environment, and assess the candidate. There's a very interesting concept which uh, has started now called peer to uh, peer coding, which means you really pair them with sorry peer coding, which means you bring in a candidate, pair them with somebody who's already an employee. Yeah. You know the person can spend half a day with the person. You know, and you know what do you call it as kata in in the technical terms, and then you assess on how the person ability to you know to 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 build the solution. What is the approach the person is taking instead of just the programming language, right? So yes. again, understand what's happening in the market, but uh, it has gone away from just doing interviews to uh, assessing candidates uh, on a very practical format. The number two yes. is, again, there are technology platforms available, uh, technology solutions are available like a matchmaking software, which reads through the historical data of, uh, you know, what has been the selection trend, uh, learn it, basis that learning assess the, 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 the bunch of the profiles, and say okay these are the five ones five candidates which you should process right mm -hmm. so that's also is one of the ways where you can uh, you know it's, it's a process of rejection rather than the process of selection but if you have a mass applications one of the ways to filter is to use a matchmaking software yeah so a very interesting point that you brought up is uh, making them uh, try out real world solutions rather than just testing them on a particular skill uh, you can basically test if uh, they'll be able to solve a real world problem. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. So and moving on. The whole uh, concept of the hackathon or the codathon started. Yes. Um, just to be uh, guys clear, the codathon is only to uh, on the coding. A hackathon is a problem solving approach, not necessarily to be coding, right? Yes. Um, even the, you know, uh, the topics like finance or sales or marketing, they have started using hackathon approach to recruit uh, talent these days. Yeah. So, okay, so 
Hackathons, again, one more thing that we offer as a service. So if you guys want to indulge in hackathons, then you can contact us and we'll be happy. So uh, for the questions now, uh, okay, Mohit, so almost 50% of the questions that we've had are around one thing, and uh, it is the notice period. Mm. It is how to deal with it, how to uh, people have notice periods of 90 days, how to keep them engaged, how to... Uh, actually make them join your company. So almost 50% of the so questions. Is, uh, yeah. Arbas, let me try answering that. You know, uh, yeah. I think there is no there's no perfect solution to this. I think it's a mix of multiple things. Number one is set the correct expectation with the with the business, right? Saying that, and I think even the business, if uh, you know know about the how the the environment is, right? So you you should be very clear about um, uh, this is the the notice period of the candidates in the market. Number two. Um, um, Number two is how do you really engage with the people who have a, you know, who have a, who have a, let's say around 60, 90 days of notice period. Again, there is a, there is a, there is a human touch required to it, uh, and then there are technology solutions available like a chatbot who could engage and could do this better. Um, uh, uh, number three is, uh, you know, you can't really practically build a, a backup for every candidate. But the conversation one should have with the hiring manager is, hey, you know what? You have 100 offers we have rolled out in the market. Tell me the top 10. I mean, tell me the 10 of them that you can't live without, right? And build the backups for those 10. And the very, very common conversation we have at almost every day, operational calls is, you know, what about those backups, right? Don't create backup for everyone, but at least 10% of the critical offers, we should create the backups. All right. So guys, uh, we're running a poll about this session. Uh, this feedback is really helpful for us. So I'll request every one of you to actually uh, rate this session on a scale of five uh, so that we can uh, you know, work upon these sessions and make them better or stay the same as well. So moving on, uh, the next question that we have is, uh, okay, so this question is, how can analytics uh, impact in making a recruitment strategy? If you could share some examples around the same. As I said, uh, one of the examples is uh, could be if you look at uh, young graduates, right? The the early talent we recruit from the engineering colleges. I think most of the companies invariably uh, go to the colleges by virtue of the tier level. You know, we go to the IITs, we offer the highest salary, we offer the highest package, right? Uh, it is not data driven. It is not scientifically driven. We also say, hey, you know what? To become a programmer, you need to come from a circuit branches. Where analytics could actually help is do a deep dive analysis, pick up, let's say, the, the people in sitting in Microsoft, the Amazon, some of the top tech companies, and do an analysis to find out what has been their educational background. Find out from a non-circuit branches standpoint, what is the one specialization which actually people become a smart programmer? A correlation between the education background and the performance as a programmer, right? Don't be surprised if a chemical engineer, right, who decides to get into programming could be a strong programmer. So that's why you analytics could help, right? I mean, this is one of the use cases where, you know, how do you really leverage the data and analyze it to draw some insights, right? And and I strongly urge you as you grow in, your, in, the, in the career, uh, please push the idea of uh, equality, which means you should not look at the early talent only by virtue of the college they come from rather create a robust assessment process allow people to uh, you know apply and then put them through an assessment but from a talent analytics standpoint it is all about uh, you know some of these use cases you can pick up and build models around it short of time arbas uh, what else we have uh, okay so i'll stick to the last three questions so one of the questions is uh, you said that uh, if you have to hire for diversity or for skills, so what would you choose? I mean, in, in a world that is moving towards diversity, would you hire for diversity or for skills? Okay, so it's an interesting uh, question. Um, uh, number one, I think, yes, diversity uh, overall has become a big buzzword and it's been happening in the last three, five years. We started with gender, then we switched to PWD. We started looking at LGBT. It's, I think, very important. As a recruiter, what we need to focus is, is to attract, uh, ensure the right mix in the funnel, right? But then leave it there. 
let the best person picks up the offer right you don't need to absolutely not required to uh you know recruit by virtue of the diversity to my mind skill uh, it should be is more important than the diversity you should really bring the right talent uh, but what we as a recruiter and that's a very very common question we get into right that what we should do and the answer is in the funnel ensure there's a right mix let the candidate go through the same process whosoever uh, clears the process gets an offer right so the skill is the answer to my mind uh, okay so uh, uh, one yeah so shaji asks uh, so they don't have any particular openings as of now but they're trying to build a talent pipeline so mm -hmm. is there any tips that you would like to give for yes. managing such a talent pipeline yeah if you do not have need the talent pooling is a new concept uh, which is shaping up uh, very important again to understand your business context identify two or three areas where your business intend to grow let's say for a discussion purpose call it as blockchain and uh, ar vr or, or augmented reality virtual reality let's identify those areas identify the way the talent is and some some of the very good formats are meetups tech talks right where no expectations that we're going to make an offer, but you bring in the right set of people, engage with them, right? You actually could have a landing plan where people register. Like I think Hacker Earth also has a landing page. So you have a landing page where people register, create a pool, split it between by skills, keep engaging with them in a form of webinars and tech talks, meetups, chai picharcha. You know, there are plenty of formats like you know, brown bag sessions, plenty of such sessions where you engage, build the pipe, and you you tap that pipe once you get the demand yeah so i guess we're short on time and we still have questions coming in so what we'll do is we'll wrap up the session right now and we'll share the questions with mohit and we'll get his expert opinions on each of them so thank you so much mohit for taking out thank time you out of your schedule and being a part of this session uh, i hope the crowd enjoyed it as much as i did it was personally a great learning experience, although not from a recruiting background, but I got to know a lot of things that might be very relevant to uh, recruiters as well as human beings, I would say. Uh, so thank you so much. And uh, thank, thank you, you to much, our audience as well for turning up for in large numbers for this webinar. And uh, thank you so much. I would love if uh, our attendees could maybe create a social buzz around how they felt uh, at this session. They can tag Mohit on LinkedIn at the rate Mohit Sharma and Hacker Earth at Hacker Earth. And uh, your feedback is really good important. things. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I hope they're all good things. And uh, yeah, thank you so much, everyone. And we'll be sharing the recording of this session uh, post in about a few hours from now so that you can have it for reference and sharing it with your team members as well. So thank you so much, guys. So uh, hopefully, have a great day ahead. And thank you, Mohit, once again. Thank you to all, uh, and uh, let's stay connected. I'm there on LinkedIn. Uh, if if there's anything which I have not answered or partially answered, feel free to drop a note to me. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good day, guys. Cheers.